Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the concepts of position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So in engineering mechanics, the concepts of position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration are used to describe the motion of a body. So you may have heard these concepts before, but it's important to know exactly what we mean by each concept, uh, as they will have very specific definitions within engineering. All right, so first up with position. So the concept of position is simply the location of a body. Uh, so a, for a particle, this refers to the location of the body itself. A uh, particle is just a, uh, a single point. Um, and so something like a baseball we might have talk, describe as a, uh, a particle, use a position for, or use a single location for that. Uh, for an extended body, which we often just call a rigid body, this is usually going to refer to the location of the center of mass of the body. Uh, so something like a car, we might choose the center of mass and describe the location of that, uh, rather than the front or back or wheel or anything like that. So generally, there's two ways to describe position of a body. Uh, we can use a distance and direction from a known point, uh, or we can describe the location in terms of distances along set coordinate axes, uh, kind of an x and y position, uh, usually. So here we have our axes. We've got some distance r, and we've got some angle theta. Uh, we draw a vector uh, to the position from our origin point. Uh, alternatively, we could describe the x and y uh, location in the coordinate axes. So we've got some distance in the x direction, some distance in the y direction we use to describe the same point. So either of these are valid ways to describe the position. Uh, so in either case, it is important to clearly identify the origin point, though. Uh, because if we don't know where we're measuring from, in either case, we're not going to know where we are. So when drawing diagrams in uh, engineering mechanics, it's important that you always put your uh, axes, what you're using to describe position, and later velocity and acceleration, uh, into your diagram. All right, in 3D, so we're still going to either have distance and direction, uh, or the coordinate axes options, but we're going to have need to have two angles for a direction uh, for the uh, r and then two angles theta and phi in this case. Uh, or if we go and describe this in terms of uh, the coordinate axes, we'd go some distance in the x direction, some distance in the y direction, some distance in the z direction. So we have three coordinate axes or a distance and two angles. So three bits of information for a position in three dimensions. All right, so next up is displacement. So the concept of displacement is simply the change in position of a body between two points in time. So if we have some uh, particle here at time one, we have X and Y. Uh, we have some later time where the particle has moved. Uh, we have X2 and Y2, so the new X and Y locations. Uh, the displacement is the difference between those two. So however far it moved between time one and time two. All right, so this is going to be a vector quantity having a magnitude and direction. Uh, so we need to not know not only how far the particle moved, but in what direction did it move between the two points. All right, so another important aspect of displacement is the issue of path independence, uh, meaning the displacement is always the direct route uh, from location one to location two, regardless of the actual path taken. Uh, so, you know, we move T1 to T2, uh, even if we moved uh, in some kind of curving, flowing path, uh, this is not the displacement. The direct route is the displacement. It is simply uh, position one to position two for displacement. All right, so next up is the concept of velocity. So velocity uh, is the change in position over the change in time, uh, or more accurately, the rate of change of position over the rate of change of time at any given instant. Uh, so our velocity vector is the derivative of my r vector. So r is the position over the rate of change of time. Um, so this is where calculus starts to come into uh, dynamics. So over any finite period of time, the average velocity will be the change in position or displacement, uh, which is our change in position, over the change in time. Uh, so velocity average uh, in any given set period of time is delta r over delta t. Uh, and delta r is our displacement. Uh, delta t is the time between 
time one and time two. All right, so it is important to note that just like displacement, velocity is a vector quantity having both a magnitude and direction. Uh, so our velocity is gonna be represented by a vector like this. Uh, if we specify just the magnitude of the velocity vector, that is the speed. Uh, so if I say a car is moving 60 miles an hour, that is a speed. Uh, if I say it's moving 60 miles an hour directly north, that would be a velocity. It's got both a magnitude and direction. All right, finally, we have acceleration. So acceleration is the rate at which the change or the rate of change of velocity over the rate of change of time. Um, so dv dt, so we have that. And since velocity itself is the rate of change in position over the rate of change in time, the acceleration is also the double derivative uh, of the change in position over the change in time. So the uh, derivative of velocity or dv dt is equal to d squared r dt squared. So this is the derivative of the derivative of position. All right, so also just as with displacement and as with velocity, uh, acceleration is our vector quantity, meaning it has a magnitude and direction. Um, the, we want to represent it as a vector quantity, uh, draw, draw a magnitude and direction in our diagrams. Um, and accelerations are gonna occur whenever the speed changes or whenever the direction of the velocity changes. Uh, so you can think about this in a car. Uh, if you press on the gas or the brake, you're changing your speed. Uh, you're gonna feel that acceleration, uh, but you also can feel that acceleration if you make a sharp turn in a car. So if you change the direction, even if your speed does not change when you're turning. Uh, so acceleration exists in either of those cases. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see